All right. Um, hello, everybody. It's uh, Chapo coming at you for Monday, May 9th, 2022. And uh, sadly, I have to begin a, I have to begin this show with a sort of a gentle admonition. Sadly, a lot of y'all still don't get it. What don't you get? Sadly, you have failed to get that ape holders can use multiple slurp juices on a single ape. What does this mean? If you have one astro ape and three slurp juices, you can create three new apes. Still don't get it? Well, our guest today is someone who is trying to understand the apes and to slurp them. We're joined today on, t- on the show by Ben McKenzie, who you may remember from such TV shows as The O.C. and Gotham. Ben, first of all, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. What an intro. What an intro. Uh, first of all, have, uh, have you slurped any apes recently, Ben? You know, I haven't slurped apes recently. I was so disappointed in the slurping because I really have felt, I really thought slurping meant something else. <laughs> um, maybe for people that aren't having sex, that's what slurping means. But, you know, to me, <laughs> slurping is something else entirely. <laughs> no, no, it's actually, they're not mutually exclusive. Like, oh, okay, I, okay. I, I, I mean, they, I mean, this is like kind of sad. I don't really like talking about my life that much uh, on the show. Like I, I just don't do it usually, but I, I should bring this up. Like a, a girl came over and like, after, you know, we did the, you know, I shook her hand and let her go to the guest bedroom. After that, she like, while I was asleep, went to my desktop and put slurp juice on my apes. She created three new apes out of the one ape I had on my desktop. And I was like, I was, I was like saving it for 18. I was going to spend 18 years waiting for my niece to do that when she graduated uh, high school. That she could uh, morph my apes. <laughs> with the with the mint juice event or whatever the fuck it is, and now it's just like I either have to buy new apes or uh, kill myself. I don't know. Uh, I mean, like the question is, many apes are still unevolved, um, but we're dealing with that today. Uh, so uh, Ben, like you, you've you've uh, sort of become a like a, a bit of an investigator into the uh, the world of NFTs, crypto, and the mega metaverse. Uh, but I want to begin today's show with a, a little contemporary news from um, just the other week. Um, this comes courtesy of the Wall Street Journal. NFT sales are flatlining. Uh, we're experiencing a complete collapse of the NFT market. Uh, just from the Wall Street Journal, they say the sale of non-fungible tokens, or NFTs, fell to a daily average of about 19,000 this week, a 92% decline from a peak of about 22,500. Oh, no, sorry, 225,000 in December, according to data from the website Non-Fungible. The number of active wallets in the NFT market fell 88%, about to about 14,000 last week from a high of 119,000 in November. Um, ben, who could have seen this coming? Who, 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 who could have seen it coming? It's a, it's a beautiful market where they're selling uh, these things called NFTs, which please don't ask me to explain what a freaking NFT is, but it's definitely not an unregistered, unlicensed security. Um, <laughs> I have a degree in economics, and this stuff drives me crazy. Uh, because what's happening is you're setting up. So in NFT markets in particular, it's wash trading. It's all fake volume anyway, or most of it is. You can create as many wallets as you want, and you can sell these things back and forth to each other, right? Making it look as though there's a real market and you could really like have value here. And then, you know, <laughs> when you've raised the price a suitable level, then you, you dump it on some poor unsuspecting sap and, um, and the game continues. At some point, um, you know, even in a manipulated market, you run out of gas because uh, no, 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 it's not a pun. I didn't mean it to be a pun, but I guess it could be a pun in terms of gas fees. Anyway, um, it's all, you know, it's the book we're writing. I'm writing with uh, Jacob Silverman. Uh, Jacob, when you're listening to this pod, he's a big fan of the pod and he's not on, which is a testament to the fact that I still got it. I'm I'm a former teen idol. <laughs> you're you're the one you re, you reach out to me, not Jacob, who apparently knows you guys and is like friends with you guys, I guess, or has played some game with you. That oh, what he, is, okay. What I, did you do, Jacob? Like, I don't see why he would be jealous because Jacob has played Counter Strike Global Offensive with me, which is the only point of being on this show. We we started this show to get me more people to play CSGO with because it's hard to get five people when you're an adult and they, they won't let me go to high school Facebook groups anymore (laughs) to ask for, to ask for players. I told them it wasn't any, it wasn't anything weird. I just, I needed five people and 
Jacob's played with me. I guess he doesn't remember because he you didn't bring it up. He's like, oh, I'm so jealous. I it's not like I've done the best thing any fan of the show can ever do. And yeah, on Vertigo with Felix. Yeah, Jacob. I mean, keep this between us, but I think he's gone a little Hollywood. You know, he's Agreed. like it's gone to his head. You know, he's got those Twitter followers and he's like tweeting these gifs and stuff. Um, yeah, he's a big fan of the pod. I too am a fan of the pod. Thank you guys for having me on. Our but to pleasure. get back to the NFT thing, yeah, I mean, the book's about money and lying. Um, you know, and I I joke that I know a little about money from econ, but I know quite a lot about lying because I do it for a living. And you know, they're lying. They're lying to you. They're calling it a currency. It's not a currency. It's basically more like a security. And a security, you know, we've had laws since the 30s uh, on that because in the 20s, the 1920s, 100 years ago, people were doing all sorts of crazy stuff, right? Manipulating the market and, and, and cornering the market and doing all sorts of stuff. Oh, sorry. I'm getting an amber alert on my phone. Um Someone's ape just got stolen. Someone's yeah. ape just got slurped. Somebody, there's a, <laughs> there's a slurp alert. Uh, uh, yeah, so like they're lying to you and, you know, lying, not great, but when you're lying about money and, and they're taking like real money from you, um, that's when I got, I got pretty pissed off. Um, last year, a couple buddies of mine who I describe as like regular kind of like you know, like upper middle class guys who have a little bit of money to play around with. And so they're playing around with crypto and they're like, hey, you should invest in it. And, you know, this is like last year. So, you know, crypto, crypto, it's everywhere. I mean, it's still everywhere, but it was like the first big, big $60,000 peak or whatever it was for Bitcoin. And so I looked at it and it was just like, this is insane. This is totally insane. Like, am I crazy? Maybe I'm crazy. So I just, I took uh, Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC. He taught this class on blockchain and cryptocurrency at MIT, and he made it available for free online. So I took it. I was very bored. <laughs> the entertainment industry had been kind of, you know, put on ice. So I had a lot of time on my hands. And, um, and I honestly, that did that, that only helped me understand that I had more questions and that still none of it made sense. And so, yeah, long story short, like last year, uh, late summer, August, I just, I, I was like, this feels bad because if I'm right, then it's a Ponzi effectively. It's like a new form of a pon like a decentralized Ponzi or, or multi-level marketing thing. If I'm right, then like you need more and more people to get into it in order to keep it going because it doesn't create value. It doesn't have any utility in of itself. And, and what happens is eventually you filter, you start like with early adopters and like people who are sort of like techie and stuff. And then you eventually you get down to like, to major ad campaigns, um, you know, starring movie stars, athletes, stuff like that. Um, it, it hadn't even really kicked off yet. It still, we still didn't have the Matt Damon Super Bowl ad yet. Um, that was to come only like a few months after I met Jacob. But I, I just, I hit him up and I invited him to beers at a, at a, a you know, Brooklyn bar, uh, and was like, let's write a book on crypto and fraud. And, uh, I think he, his wife was just about to give birth and I think he needed a reason to get out of the house. And he was like, yeah, sure, let's do that. But yeah, we've been collaborating ever since and it's been super fun because it's such a crazy world. You mentioned like feeling like sort of ang ang anger at behest of people who, yeah, I mean, there are just a lot of bag holders in this. Like it, it, in a, I would say it's like 95% bag holders. But I was kind of wondering this while watching the recent collapse. 